Dark Country Roads. I posted a few stories on here, but I've been holding out with this one because it's kind of lengthy, but I've decided to finally post it. Now, obviously, I've had some creepy encounters and close calls, but this was the only time I legitimately thought I was going to end up a mutilated corpse in a cornfield. This happened about 10 years ago when I was 19. This happened before the party incident that I posted before. At this point, I have been working second shift at the front desk of the local sheriff's department, with my shift ending at 10 at night. This night was the beginning of my weekend, and I was picking up my friend from her aunt's to stay at my house. My friend's aunt lived in a trailer park about 5 miles outside of town that you have to take a bunch of twisty country roads to get to, so I'm still on the main route talking on my cell phone with my boyfriend, now husband, who was based at Camp Pendleton then. I know this is bad, but it was late, and hardly any other cars on the road, and I'm a careful driver. But things got eventful with a quickness as I approached the turnoff for the back roads to my friend's aunt. The turnoff was a four-way stop, and there was a truck in the oncoming lane, signaling to turn the opposite way I was. But as I turn, the truck changes course and starts following me. And I'm talking this truck was on my bumper with its brights on. I was driving an early model Cavalier, so the headlights lit up the inside of my car. I'm not freaking out yet, because drunk assholes behind the wheel is a pretty common occurrence from where I'm from. My biggest fear at the moment was he was going to hit my car. Then, the truck speeds around me and starts to slow down. He was trying to pull me over, but I actually finally got a good look at the truck and relayed everything to my boyfriend over the phone, make, model, color. I just couldn't read the license plates, they were caked in mud. So this goes on for a little bit, the truck pulls in front of me, slows to a stop, I go back around him, finally, I just decide to take the initiative and stop. I figured I'll keep my car running and only crack my window. It's a country road in between fields, it'd be virtually impossible to really block a car in on the road, unless you're terrified of driving in grass. So I stop and crack my window about two inches and keep my phone by my ear. The truck pulls up beside me and opens his passenger window and just leans across his seat to stare at me. Is there a problem? He doesn't answer. Can I help you? Finally, he snapped out of whatever he was. I thought you were somebody else. That made sense to me. I drove a really common car for the area. I knew of at least four others that were even the same color as me. I breathe a huge sigh of relief. Okay, well, have a good night. I start driving again, but the guy pulls right back onto my bumper and keeps riding my ass. And now he's trying to bump my car. Now I'm panicking. I start giving my boyfriend instructions. I'm telling him where I am exactly and tell him to call my local dispatch and tell them to start looking for the truck. I'm convinced I'm about to be abducted but my boyfriend refuses to hang up. Finally, I drive up on the trailer park. I don't even brake or signal. I took that turn at 50 miles per hour. To this day, I don't know how I held the road, but I, but I did. And this truck is still on my ass. I immediately lay on my horn, thinking that if this guy is gonna get me, then somebody is gonna see him do it. I blared the horn all the way into my friend's aunt's driveway, and the truck pulls in right in front of me. My friend and her aunt are both on the front porch. I notice the pure horror on both of their faces before the guy from the truck is outside my window, banging on it with both hands screaming, I thought you were somebody else, over and over again. Then he jumps back into his truck and peels off. It took forever to calm my boyfriend down and then to calm myself down. But eventually, everyone relaxed. My friend and I got on with our night and the next morning we went and filed a police report. Unfortunately, without the license plate number, there wasn't much that they could do, but I never did see the truck again, and I didn't end up a body on the roadside, and that's a big plus.
Encounter on a Dark Country Road I just heard about the subreddit today, and I have a story that I'll think will fit very well here. Years ago, I was home from university and was spending the evening with my girlfriend. We were feeling a little frisky, but since we were home from college at our parents' houses, we decided to go for a little drive. Our hometown was fairly rural, so it didn't take much time for us to drive out somewhere on a country road near an alfalfa field where we could have some privacy. Hardly anyone drove past there, maybe one truck every hour or so. So the engine is off, the lights are off, and the seats are reclined. My car was small, so there wasn't any room to get in the back and really go at it. But tenderness is tenderness, whether there is a stick shift between you or not. But that night, I'm glad I had to stay in the driver's seat. Just as things begin to get real heated, I see some headlights in the rearview mirror coming up the road. That's not a big deal, so I tone down the action a bit, waiting for it to pass. But the truck gets closer, its headlights suddenly went dark. My girlfriend wasn't totally aware of it yet, but I pulled away, a bit out of curiosity. Then I heard the coasting, gravelly crunch of a vehicle pulling up onto the gravel behind us. It was dark there, no streetlights or anything to go by. But with what moon there was, I could barely make out the outline of a truck behind us. No cab lights, no running engine. I asked my girlfriend if her door was locked. This stopped her dead in her tracks. She said it was and asked why. I told her there was someone behind us, parked in the gravel. She immediately strained herself up, and I put my seat back up, never taking my eyes off my mirror. Then, I saw the driver's side door to the truck open. The cab light still didn't turn on in the truck, and I never saw anyone get out, but that was my sign to get out of there. I told my girlfriend we needed to leave now, which she really quietly replied, Okay. I started up the vehicle, and trying my best not to spin out in the gravel, drove as fast as I could onto the road. We drove in silence for about two minutes, heading back towards town, when I noticed that I could not see the sky clearly behind the vehicle. We were being followed. The truck still did not turn on its headlights, but it was tailgating me very closely. I calmly informed my girlfriend that they were behind us, and that we had plenty of gas, and we'd get back in town just fine, no big deal. She said okay in that little voice again, and went silent, glancing back every so often. This continued for about two minutes, and I briefly considered calling the police, before the headlights behind me flared on. The truck revved its engine, pulled into the other lane, and hauled past me like a bat out of hell. I felt like I should take her home at this point, but the last thing I wanted was for those assholes to follow us to where she lived. Whoever they were, they, they made me uneasy. I told her as much, and she agreed. We wove a flighty path through several nice neighborhoods, before pulling into a cul-de-sac where we could sit and wait to see if the truck was still around. We never saw the truck again that night, but our cul-de-sac time did give us opportunity to have the intimate time we were wanting, all the more intense due to constantly watching to make sure that we were safe. Looking back, I'm sure it was just some country farm people who are used to catching kids making out near their fields. They probably wanted to bang on our windows and give us a good scare for fun, but I have to wonder why they followed us for so long and why they passed us the way they did. Were they out for a joyride, looking for some entertainment? Creepy farm road truck person or people, let's not meet. You give me the heebie-jeebies. Witching Hours I have been a long-time stalker of Reddit and let's not meet, but I've never posted or shared anything before. After reading many frightening personal encounters, I realized I could share a few of my own. This one happened just last year. A couple lost on a dark road sounds like a start of every horror story, so it's fitting that that's where that actually begins. It's early November, cold, rainy, around midnight. My fiancé and I 
like taking spontaneous late night drives. We typically start out on one of the main roads within our city and keep following it until we hit the next town. Sometimes our drives last hours. The layout of my county and surrounding counties is a little bizarre. All the cities and towns are isolated by large spreads of woods and country. I live in a relatively large college town, but a half hour drive in one direction can land you stranded on jagged unmarked gravel roads in the middle of nowhere or in small weird villages that no one knows about. It's actually pretty exciting, and that's why we do it so much. So it's midnight, and we're nearly lost. Willa, my fiance, is poking around on my phone, trying to figure out what road we're on. We're on a mud path in a pit of country framed by small towns that we've never heard of. Flory, Waneka, and Tell or something. There are no other cars on the road, it's rainy and misty, and the headlights on my car aren't doing a damn thing. There are strands of trees and brush on either side of the road. We're heading north. She tells me that she thinks that we're gonna cross 200th Street West, which runs into Rye Road, which is a straight shot to Wenica. We make our way down the mud road for a half hour and never hit it. The boys had fun on these sorts of drives. It's the first time we've ever really been on edge. Willis says we should have found 200th Street West already and asked if we passed it without noticing. I asked nervously if we should turn around but she doesn't think we can without backing up into a tree or a ditch. I'm driving a Mazda, and it's an awfully wide turn. She's biting her nails while scrolling around on Google Maps. Ten minutes pass, and we finally see a little black road snaking up a hill. Branching off off the road we're on, I hurriedly turn into it. It's very narrow and twigs and branches are raking the doors and windows of the car. When we complete the climb up the little road, we find ourselves in a wide paved clearing with a house at the back of it, tucked into the thick woods. Willa doesn't miss a beat and starts hissing for me to turn around. Our headlights illumine the whole property, which is in major disrepair. No lights, window shattered, siding and shingles shredded. The yard is littered with scraps and trash, barrels, car parts, tools, hundreds of glass bottles, branches, slabs of concrete, rocks, nasty old Chevy pickup. It looks like the house is sitting on top of all of it. Every inch of the property is entangled in nets of ivy and weeds. Willa points out the little moving shadows and glowing spots around the yard. There are dozens of cats around, and they're all looking at us, and their eyes are glimmering from the headlights. I almost piss myself when a walnut-sized rock darts out from the brush and pops against the windshield. It fractures the glass. Willa screams and grabs my arm. She's whimpering, Den, Den, Denny, what was, th what was that? Oh my god, Den, what happened? The rain is pouring and the black streams down the trees, over the house, and across the pavement. All of the blood runs from my face. After a few seconds, a man stumbles out from the bushes and weeds, and he's carrying a fucking shovel. He's swallowed in a big, dirty navy coat and has a beard. Then a screen door on the house opens, and all the cats scatter. A tall, thin, spidery woman crawls out onto the porch. She has long, wild gray hair. She's just up high enough on the porch that the headlights don't reach her eyes. She wipes her unusually dark hands on her skirt. She stares at us. Well, I screaming and crying and slapping the door lock repeatedly. I throw the car into reverse, rolling over the cinder blocks and branches, and then screech back down the road. After Willa stops crying and there's some distance between us and the house, I, I start to relax. Yet, when we get out of the woods and hit a big, long, straight stretch of road, I notice headlights behind us. I get a stomachache when I notice the car is mimicking all of our turns onto different roads. After nearly half an hour of being pursued, we finally reach Flory and pull into a gas station, being visited by a few other people. I watch the vehicle pass. It's the same nasty Chevy truck we saw at the house. They stocked us all the way to the next town. 
We wait till we see the truck disappear down the road before we get out, get some food, and ask for directions. On our way home, I look at the rearview mirror more than I do at the road ahead. When we get back early in the morning, my teeth don't stop chattering until I fall asleep. So, creepy shovel guy and dirty hand cat witch, let's not meet ever again. Thanks.